Good morning everyone, Mike the CPA here, back with you with another investing and tax video. In this video, I'm going to specifically show you how you can progress towards retirement, build your assets and your wealth, and do it all while paying as little tax as possible as we're talking about a tax efficient retirement. I'm literally going to show you how you can make anywhere from 60 up to $103,000 under the current tax laws and do it all while paying absolutely zero in tax and I think you guys are going to like this and you can do it making passive income. How does that sound? Damn! I want to take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. If you're brand new here, I make videos around finances, investing, and taxes. If those are subjects you want to learn more about, then certainly subscribe below and make sure you hit that bell notification icon. Drop a like, leave a comment. Let's get into the content. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I like to do a lot of on this channel is I don't just like to talk about investing in taxes. I like to actually show you because I'm a visual person and I figure you might be a visual person. And so I fig figured let's look at some real tax forms as we talk about investing. If you guys follow my channel, you know I love to produce videos around investing, especially dividend investing, because it's a great way to build a passive income and do it while minimizing taxes. But I wanna show you with forms now how you might build an income for yourself so that when you get to retirement, your the amount of tax you pay is very minimal. And so what we're looking on at on screen right here, we're going to look at two different examples and these aren't going to take much time to show you, but nonetheless, I think you're going to benefit from it. In the first example, I want to show you somebody who's single, who files single because filing status is really important when determining what, how much you might pay in tax based on your income, v filing status, very important. So just remember that. So as we go down here, there's just a couple income sources I want to run by you that I've put together in this scenario. And I've seen this income quite often on different people's tax returns. As you guys know, I prepare tax returns for a living. That's one of the things I do. So one example of income that people might have, and it's this, this is more rare, but I just wanted to throw it in there just so you guys can see it, is tax exempt income of $3,000. This is typically derived from municipal bonds. A lot of times I see clients with, you know, brokerage statements from Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, you know, Morgan Stanley, whatever. And they'll often have some of these tax exempt interest bonds that they're invested in or tax exempt muni bonds that we'll see. So let's just say that over the course of your lifetime, if this is you, you have $3,000 per year annually in interest income from tax municipal bonds. The next step is because you love dividend investing, you've been able to invest consistently over the course of your life and you've developed a dividend income of $30,000. And you know from if you've been watching some of my other videos, which I'll link in the card above, that how qualified dividends are taxed more favorably in that video I did on dividend tax rates. Well, let's just say you have $30,000 in dividends and 30,000 of them are qualified, which means you get the lower tax rate, the capital gain rate on those dividends. So that's going to help you tax wise, tax wise. So if we have tax exempt so far and we have qualified dividends. So already our taxes are looking pretty good. Next, we come down to this 12,000 and I've circled it because I accidentally made a mistake here. This is meant to be a Roth IRA because you know that if you put your money in a Roth IRA, no matter if you sell off investments or you make dividends annually and distribute the money out to yourself, either way, it's 100% tax-free and one of the most favorable investment accounts that you can get your hands on, whether it be a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k, definitely love the Roth. Hold on, Mike, I'm gonna cut you off just for a second. What most people don't know, fun fact, is that tax exempt interest can actually make your social security income more subject to taxes while your Roth IRA will not. And then, so that's $12,000 there. It should be on line 4A. And in box five, we have a person making $20,000 a year in social security. And I know that what you're thinking, you're thinking, well, we might not have social security when we retire. And that might be the case, but for now, just go with me here, go with me on this example, and just assume you're you're gonna have some sort of social security or something similar to it 
once you get to retirement. All in all, how much income did you just make in this example? Well, you had $3,000 in tax exempt interest. We added $30,000 in dividends. And of those $30,000 in dividends, 30,000 of that was qualified dividends. You had another 12,000 come in from your Roth IRA and you had $20,000 a year in social security. And this is if you file single, remember, that's really important. So you just made $65,000 in income, if this is you. Now, how much of it is taxable or subject to taxation? Well, the tax exempt interest would not be. So the only thing that could potentially make you pay tax is the qualified dividends at this point and the social security, which of the $20,000 in social security, 1,000 or 12,150 of that is taxable. So you have a total taxable income of only $42,150 right here, but you made $65,000, which is quite nice. Now we get to take the standard deduction. And for these examples, I'm assuming you're not going to itemize and you're just going to take the standard deduction. So therefore you had $65,000 in taxable income, but the amount subject to tax is only 29,950 or 30,000 of that. Well, you go scroll down here, we go to the next page and you're gonna quickly see that what's your tax liability? Zero. So you're making just over $5,000 a month, completely tax-free. How's that sound to you guys? Could you make a living on that? I think so. I think I think I could do okay with that. I could get by, I can get by just fine, especially if you have no debt. And when you're structuring your retirement, and you're, when you're building your passive income sources so that one day you can step away, Definitely, I always suggest making sure you have no debt. The If you have no debt, you don't need a lot of income to survive. The lower your income, guess what? The less you pay in taxes. So it all works in your favor to have that debt paid off when you're ready to retire. For retirement, you can see how you can get away scot-free from paying any sort of tax. Now, let's move on to example two, and let's just take these amounts to another level. All right, example number two, ladies and gentlemen, this time you are married, and let's see if that's gonna help you tax-wise or hurt you tax-wise. With being married and filing jointly, there are some advantages and some disadvantages, but let's just see how this plays out. So we're gonna have the same sort of income as we did before, okay? This time, we're still gonna have our $3,000 in tax exempt income, However, because there's two of you, let's just assume that both of you now were able to work throughout the course of your lifetime, you're able to invest in dividend paying companies, and now you're making $46,500 a year combined in dividends, in qualified dividends. Okay, so we're gonna add that. And in your marriage, not only has your romance bloomed, but your Roth IRAs have as well, because you didn't marry no fool. You said, hey, we're both married, we both qualify to invest in a Roth, so you both did. You both opened up your Roths, and you built those assets, because your romance was spicy, and so was your finances. Let's face it, nothing is hotter than having a spouse who has the similar goals as you. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, baby! <laughs> So your total income from Roth IRAs every single year going forward will be $22,000 a year, 100% tax-free for life. And lastly, your combined Social Security income, because you both worked, now you're pulling in $32,000 a year in Social Security benefit income. So how does this play out? Well, if you add, if we continue adding those amounts, let me add the Roth real quick. We're gonna add the Roth 22,000, Plus, we're adding the 32,000 from Social Security. You're now retired, and your retirement income, you're making $103,500 per year. And you're retired. And guess what? You have no debt, and you have no debt, and your annual, your monthly income, passive monthly income, is now $8,625 a year. Dominating! Woo, that's a nice retirement income. Your retirement years are starting to look golden. Can you guys get by on that? I think so. I think so, especially if you have no debt and you are living frugally, you can do whatever you want with your time at that point. And so in this case, in these two examples, you're able to see how you can make $65,000 per year and you're able to see that married, you can make up to $103,500 roughly from dividend investing and in social security and IRAs and that uh, Roth IRAs. 
And on the second page, you can see your tax liability would be zero. And that's why I wanted to show you in this video, guys, these two examples so that while you're investing, structure your investments in a way whereby at the have the end result in mind as much as you can, okay? It's, now, is it gonna play out perfectly like this? Probably not, but even if you just paid maybe a couple thousand in taxes on this sort of income, it's really nothing, right? It's hardly anything. But if you, the point is, it is not to be able to get zero in taxes, if, because that's really hard to do, but if you can do it, great. But really just to, if you do this correctly, if you do this wisely throughout the course of your life, then you're gonna be able to have incomes like this, passive, coming in for the rest of your life and not giving the government another dime out of your hide. And that is what I wanna show you. And that is why I love playing with numbers, playing with taxes and combining that with investing. The two go hand in hand, finances, investing and taxes. Now, if I were to raise the income on tax exempt or even qualified dividends or social security, then we would have to start paying tax on this income because that's gonna push us over the, the threshold. There are a few other ways to do this. You can do this to, using real estate. It's a bit more technical and more complicated, but if you had real estate, you could also still pay zero in tax at times because of depreciation and still be receiving income and still have no tax. So the, it's possible, it's, there's a lot more planning involved. It's not perfect, but the point is though, once again, is that you invest wisely, you invest with taxes in mind, and you can come out the other end by paying very little to no tax when you actually step away from your job and want to fully retire. So I'm wrapping up this video and I shared this information with my wife because when I see things like this, it really gets me all nerded out. I have to share this stuff because I'm really passionate about it. Well, she made a good point. I'm pretty sure she's going to dump me now, but she said, well, well, so if I wasn't married to you and we both had our separate finances, but we lived in the same house, we could both make $130,000 per year and pay no tax. I said, yeah, you're right. If we weren't married and we invested this way, we could pull in 130,000 bucks per year and pay no tax because of the tax laws and both file single. Funny how that works. Not recommending that anybody divorce their spouse in order to avoid paying tax, that might be a hard sell. If you say, oh, hey, honey, I think we need to get divorced because I love you so much that I want to pay no taxes. Don't worry, we'll still live under the same roof. We just won't pay taxes at all anymore. That's probably going to kill the romance and a lot of other things along with it. So tread cautiously. <laughs> all right, guys, if you liked the video, do me a favor, drop a like, leave a comment below. Now that you've seen this, what do you, how will you structure your investments differently? What will you do differently now once you've seen this? Let me know down in the comments, leave your questions, and I would love to hear from you guys because that's what makes YouTube so fun is interacting with you across this country in the comment section of YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon, live life on Caged, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.